I want to thank everybody from each side of the House and the crossbench who's contributed to the debate. I want to in particular uh, acknowledge the Prime Minister. Uh, you, every every post-war Labor leader has had cultural policy in some way as something that uh, was part of the, the key legacies of the government, but no Labor leader has brought it forward so early in a term. Uh, as, what, as what Prime Minister Albanese has done. Uh, that's because of his genuine commitment over his, whole, over his whole life to Australian storytellers and to his resistance uh, his whole life to the different attempts of culture wars to, to go after our storytellers, as we've seen too often. I also want to pay tribute to the member for Macquarie, uh, who is the arts envoy. A whole lot of the work with Revive was through a very intense but fast consultation process. Uh, to get an entire policy document like that together involved a lot of consultation and meetings, about half of which were convened by myself, but the other half, uh, where the lead was very much taken by the member for Macquarie as Arts Envoy. We would not have revived without her work. And I want to also pay tribute to the many public servants um, and there's been different attempts in this debate by some to somehow denigrate people as bureaucrats. It's a pretty noble term, the term public servant. It is. Yeah, the concept of serving the public. Uh, it's a pretty noble term. And that's what those individuals did in making sure that they met some time frames that were put forward by the government. Uh, they had every right to say, this is an impossible time frame, because uh, I said we'd get it done in six months. In fairness, it took seven. Uh, but we got there, and what's happening now with this legislation will ricochet through communities around the whole of Australia. Uh, the evidence of that was seen in the different speeches that were given by people talking about the arts and the significance of it in their own electorate, including members of the opposition, the members for Bradfield, Sturt, Casey, Nichols and Lyon, uh, including from the crossbench the member for Wentworth, and including uh, speeches from government members, including the members for Macquarie, for Lyons, for Swan, for Lola, for Werriwa and for Wills. Effectively, what this legislation does, uh, presuming the Senate is kind enough to, to get through it uh, in the same way that we have, uh, is we get a new organisation, Creative Australia, with the Brandis cuts returned mm -hmm. for the funding that was meant to be there a decade ago, finally possible again. We get a works of scale fund so that not only are they able to do the work for small and medium companies, but they're able to start the investments that deliver the big works of the future. We get one organisation that brings together commercial, government funded and philanthropic funded all into the same body instead of what it was for too long, which was Australia Council deals with government funding, creative partnerships deals with philanthropic and we just leave the commercial world to look after itself as though it wasn't the same workforce and as though it wasn't the same audience. We then go one step further in the new organisation with Music Australia, acknowledging that when most of us in this room were, were growing up, Australian music, uh, you'd look at the charts and a good number were always Australian bands. You had a whole lot more venues back then. You'd listen to the radio and no matter what station you were on, Australian music was absolutely part of the soundtrack to our lives and that in so many ways has slipped. Yeah. Mm. And it's not because we don't have great artists. The artists now, if you go to a festival, are at least as good and probably better uh, than a whole lot of what we might have grown up with. Uh, but we have the challenge now that the ways of making money that used to be there aren't there in the same way anymore. The number of venues aren't available and the opportunities for, for commercial success through album sales just don't happen in the same way that they used to. So we need a body that is able to make the fast decisions that need to be made to really enrich that contemporary music sector. Uh, we can no longer have a situation where we have a view that contemporary music isn't part of what federal government has to take an interest in. Now it'll be there and with, contemporary, and with the Music Australia, it'll be right at the core. Mm -hmm. But it's also the case with creative workplaces being established that we need to acknowledge the different institutions we have for safe workplaces of reasonable remuneration haven't delivered for the creative sector. 
They're different sorts of workplaces. They're itinerant workplaces. The method of engagement is often not an employment uh, relationship. But to think that the storytellers we are, rely on, who to often tell difficult and challenging stories, have been experiencing that in the very workplaces where they're doing that storytelling, needs to be addressed, needs to be dealt with, and creative workplaces will do just that. I want to thank the many artists who in difficult times spoke up, in particular in what's known globally as the Me Too movement, of coming forward and telling stories, sometimes knowing that in doing the telling they risked being ostracised and finding it harder to get work. But a whole lot of artists took that step. Had they not, we wouldn't have known about the need to establish creative workplaces. But I want those artists who, who stuck their necks out in different ways, those arts workers uh, and, their, and their union, who said these, Mia, who said that these stories need to be told, to know that by the government they have been heard. And in this legislation, we're taking specific action to make sure that those workplaces can be safe and fair. And when the Prime Minister, I didn't know he was going to make the references to the Sydney Opera House, uh, but if I can just conclude with this, because I think it brings so many threads together. Uh, tonight, normally I, normally I stay in Canberra on a Thursday night, have dinner with some friends. Uh, tonight I'm, I'm heading off and I will be, I'll be at that building. And you bring together, yeah, best building in the world. <laughs> you bring it together with what, with the projections of art that will be there. None other than the art of John Olson. None other than, than, than oh, Olson's right. art is the art that's going to be projected there. And the performance work that will be done tonight, which will be difficult and challenging, uh, is from the artist Jaguar Jones, uh, who performs. Uh, as Dina Lynch. She's a visual artist, she's a photographic artist, she's a performance artist and, and she's a, a contemporary musician. Uh, but she was one of the artists who spoke out uh, and put herself into jeopardy in different ways by doing that. But all of that comes together tonight with one of the artists who helped drive the cultural policy that we're now implementing at a building which has housed our storytellers ever since it was built and is globally iconic while having projected onto it the work of one of our greatest visual artists. I want those stories to keep coming. Mm -hmm. I want those, those new artists to keep breaking through. I want when people think of Australia to not just think of the natural beauty but to think of the stories that are still being told, the new stories, the new creativity, and the stories that have lived on this earth and on this continent ever since the first sunrise. That's what's possible, and that's the decision that the parliament's taking in now implementing the key recommendation of Australia's cultural policy revive.